So in the final video for chapter 19, we're going to take a look at how we can do uh, stoichiometry and um, from electrochemical reactions. So for example, let's say that we're running uh, the reaction 2H plus plus 2 electrons gives H2 gas. And we just want to know how much H2 do we make? So we have to think about how can we figure out um, the amount of products we'll make from an electrochemical reaction. So we have to introduce a new uh, concept, which is current. So up until now, all of we've been talking about is the voltage, basically, the cell potential, which is the field. So that describes how much dr pushing force there is for an electron to go from the anode to the cathode. Now, remember, P, the power of any cell, um, is equal to I times V. So the V tells us the um, driving force for the electron to move, and then I tells us, well, how many electrons are actually moving. So the current, which gets the symbol I, um, has units of amperes, or amps, and is a measurement of charge, Q, divided by time, T. So we can also say that the current times the time is equal to Q. Now there are two important things from um, there are two important things about current that we have to know. So the first one we're going to look at is that I is proportional to the rate. So. This is one thing that you should understand because um, we have to understand that I, so, so in, in, um, in an electrochemical process, as we pass electrons across, um, electrons have a charge, right? And the link between the charge and the number of electrons that are passed is Faraday's constant. So this tells us that the charge is 96,485 coulombs per mole. So, and remember, coulombs is a unit of charge Q. So, we can basically say that I is proportional to the charge with respect to time, which is also proportional to the number of electrons with respect to time. Because if we know the Q, we can immediately get the number of electrons by using Faraday's constant. So if this is proportional to the number of electrons over time, and we have a reaction where electrons are a reactant or a product, we can say that I is essentially, it's proportional to D times the number of electrons with respect to time. And this is also proportional to, by stoichiometry, the change in concentration of something with respect to time. So this is a rate. Because if you think about it, if we pass two electrons, we know how much H plus was consumed, right? So the number of electrons, in this case, for every two electrons, there are two H plus that are consumed. So that's how we know that the number of electrons are proportional to the, the concentration. So the current is actually a measurement of the rate of the reaction because as the reaction proceeds and electrons are produced, we're also consuming uh, reactants and producing products at the same rate because electrons are linked by stoichiometry. So this is really important, an important concept because if you were to have a machine where you were able to just set up an electrochemical reaction and have it going and then you can turn a knob um, that is the current knob, as you turned up that knob, you are literally speeding up the reaction rate. You are literally dialing in the rate saying, well, if I'm going at one amp and I want to double the rate of the reaction, I'm going to turn this thing up to two amps and now the reaction is going to go twice as fast because twice as many electrons are being transferred. You're actually going to see that in experiment 19, uh, I'm sorry, in experiment 20, where we use a constant current setup to uh, to drive the production of hydrogen gas. And when you turn that knob, the amount of bubbles that are produced will change. As you turn the knob to higher currents, you're going to make more bubbles faster. So um, one thing is that current is proportional to the reaction rate.
The other thing to think about is that um, current is proportional to the amount of reactants consumed or the products made. So if we run a current for a given amount of time, we can get the charge. And if we know the charge, we can relate the charge. So let me just write this down here. So if we have I over T is equal to Q, uh, we know that Q is proportional to the number of electrons. And we know that the number of electrons is proportional to the concentration. So we can now calculate a amount of product that's made at, for over a given period of time. So let's look at an example of this. Let's say that we run 1.0 milliamps is our current for 20 minutes. So we hook up an electrochemical cell. Um, we're making hydrogen gas. You know, how much H2 would be produced at that um, rate? So we remember that I times T is equal to Q. So we have to look at what the units are here. So I amperes is equal to coulombs per second. So when we're using our time, we have to convert our time into seconds and we have to convert our, um, amp, our, our current into amps to make sure this all works. So let's start kind of working through this. So let, let's say that we have 20 minutes. So let's figure out how many seconds is in 20 minutes. Well, for every one minute, there is 60 seconds. Uh, so this is gonna give us 1200 seconds. And then we need to know, well, how many amps do we have? Well, so we have 1.0 milliamps times for every 1000 milliamps, there's one amp. So this gives us 0 0.001 amps of current. So if we take 1200 seconds, I times T is equal to Q. So if we take 1200 seconds times 0 0.001 amps, we're going to get a charge equal to 1.2 coulombs. So now the question is, well, what do we do with the coulombs? This is where Faraday's constant comes in. So if we take our 1.2 coulombs, and we say for every uh, 96,485 coulombs, there's one mole of electrons, we can now get the number of moles of electrons. And if we look at our reaction, we have to remember that there are two H plus plus two electrons gives H2. So our stoichiometric link is that for every two electrons, there's one hydrogen that's produced. So for every two moles of electrons, there's one mole of H2 produced. And then from here, we can go to grams, we can go to... Um, liters, if you use PV equals NRT, whatever you want. But let's just go to grams um, for convenience sake. So for every one mole, there is 2.00 grams, and that's going to equal 1.2 times 10 to the minus 5 grams produced. So you can see how we can use I times T is equal to Q, get the number of coulombs, and once we have the number of coulombs, it becomes a matter of stoichiometry. Um, we can relate the, the coulombs to the number of moles of electrons and the number of moles of electrons to a product uh, or a reactant using the reaction stoichiometry. So let's actually look at a lecture problem where we have to use this to figure out what's going on. Okay, so in this problem, uh, we have two examples of uh, electrolysis. So in the first one, it says a constant electric current deposits 365 milligrams of silver in 216 minutes from an aqueous solution. What is the current? So if we want to know what the current is, we need two numbers. We need the charge in coulombs and we need the time in T. We've got the time in T already, that's 216 minutes. So um, we can convert that to seconds pretty easily. So we'll kind of just do that right off the cuff. We'll take 216, you know what, let me just pop this down a little lower so that we get, have a little room to do the uh, fraction later. So if we take 216 minutes, and we say, well, okay, for every one minute, there is 60 seconds. We get 12,960 seconds. So we've kind of gotten the first part already for our current. Now, let's look at the 365 milligrams of silver. If we know how much silver is being deposited, 
um, then we can kind of backtrack this going along the same route that we did before. Uh, that 365 milligrams of silver came from the number of electrons that were transferred to it. So we can figure out, well, let's start with 365 milligrams of silver and say, let's get this to moles. So the first thing we have to do is we have to say, well, okay, so for every 1,000 milligrams, we have one gram. Then we look up the molecular weight of silver, which is 107.87 grams for every one mole. Okay, so now we're in moles. Now here's the, hard, here's the hard part. We have to think about, well, how many electrons are required in order to reduce a silver ion? So, because we have silver nitrate. So we're taking silver ion, we're adding an electron, and we're making silver metal. So the silver ion requires one electron for its reduction. That is something that we would expect you to know how to do. You'd have to know that if you're reducing silver nitrate, that silver has a plus one charge based on silver nitrate, and that it would require one electron. So our stoichiometry here is going to be for every one mole of silver, there's one mole of electrons. Okay, and then we can use Faraday's constant. We can say for every one mole of electrons, there is 96,485 coulombs. Um, so when you take the stoichiometry to its end, you get 300... Oops, sorry, guys. My iPad is misbehaving a little bit. 326.5 coulombs of charge that were passed, which we can put up here. And when we take our ratio, we get 0 0.0252 amps that were passed. So that shows you how we can go in the reverse direction from the example we did previously. So now let's look at this one. This one says, how many grams of oxygen can be liberated by electrolysis of water with a current of 0 0.0565 amps after um, 1.85 times 10 to the fourth seconds? Okay, so uh, this is going to be one of those ones where we have to get I times T is equal to Q, and then from there we can take this and, and do our stoichiometry. Okay, so if we start with 0 0.0565 amps, and we multiply that by 1.85 times 10 to the fourth seconds, this is going to give us uh, 1017 Coulombs, and then from the Coulombs we can use Faraday's constant, which is 96,485 Coulombs for every one mole. And now we have to look at how many, uh, this is per mole of electron, now we have to look at, well, how many electrons are passed? So the electrolysis of water, I showed you this reaction, H2O gives O2 plus 4H plus plus 4 electrons. Um, you would look this up in your table. Um, or on an exam, for this one, for the electrolysis of water, we might give you the, the reaction because this is a little bit more complicated than um, just a reduction of silver. But anyway, you should still be prepared to know how to do this. So for this, you'd have to look this up in your table of reduction potentials. Uh, and you would have to say, well, okay, this process is a four electron process. So we would need four moles of electrons for every one mole of H2O or I'm sorry, for every one mole of oxygen that's produced, that's what it's looking for. And then for every one mole of oxygen, there are 32.0 grams. And so your final answer here would be 0 0.0843 grams of oxygen. So uh, th this, give, this shows you um, how to handle electrolysis both in the forward direction and in the reverse direction. You can either start from a current and a time and come up with the mass of a, the amount of a product that's made, or you can go in the reverse direction where you get the amount of a product that's made and then you calculate your current if, if that was done over a certain period of time. So this is it for chapter 19. Um, we're now going to be moving into chapter 20 which is going to look at something completely different, which is nuclear reactions.